Hey guys, how you guys doing? So today I want to talk about a topic that's been in the news as of late. Uh, it started right around the November of last year. And it's pretty big. It's not exactly Linuxy, but it is definitely something that you can use on Linux. Uh, it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And it's it's something that has drawn a lot of ire in the media lately. And it's an app called Chat GPT Text, which is an AI driven chat. Uh, like, you know, like WhatsApp, you know, and or Facebook Messenger, you know, you chat into it, you know, you type into it what it is that you're trying to say, and an actual artificial intelligence will respond back to you. Like, you know, if you ask it what is Einstein's theory, and it'll respond back to you. Uh, you can install it on Windows, you can install it on Mac, uh, for Linux, it's an app image which you can get if you go if you do a Google search on Chat GPT, you can find it and download it. You go on the OpenAI's webpage, sign up for your account, put in your username and password, bam, and you're good to go. And you can start using it right away. What has brought a lot of ire is because schools have had a problem with it because a lot of students are using this to look up stuff while they're either in class or at home doing homework or whatever. And they're taking these answers from the AI and putting it in their homework fields and submitting it and using it for tasting tests and all kinds of stuff. And that in and of itself is really what I want to talk about a little bit in the fact of how this technology pendulum has swung to a point that it's actually detrimental to society. And, and, and not in the fact that, that it's a bad thing that we have something out there that we could use to find out a right answer. Now, in their disclaimers, they'll tell you that it can also give misleading information, and some things can be offensive in what it answers, according to their disclaimer. If you go to their webpage, and when you sign up, it tells you all this. So the problem with it is, is a lot of people today are so fascinated with instant information, whether it's correct or not. I mean, used to be a time... I'm 50 years old, 50 years plus old. And I remember when journalism, one of the hallmarks of every journalism is that we had to ethically report stuff. They had to verify and double verify and triple verify sometimes in their source and the actual content and the validity of the content. So nowadays, it's like people are just simply screenshotting, screen capturing, copying and pasting what they read from somewhere on whatever, and they don't verify that any of it's real. A lot of you journalists do that. A lot of social media people do that. I mean, there's, it just leaves a lot of. And so with this chat GPT, what has happened is, in New York, children were starting to do this. They were plagiarizing stuff, and they were getting stuff. And to the, it got so bad, it got to the point that, that the New York school system literally blacklisted it from their networks they can't you can't access chat gpt or open ai network at all on their thing on their networks at all their school network system so i mean it got so bad a lot of government places are starting to lock down on this but what's interesting is that um open ai has acknowledged the issue they've acknowledged the problem and what they're doing is they're getting ready in their or they have started i'm not sure if they're getting ready or have started but they're developing a software capable of detecting whether a particular piece of text that was either copied and pasted and used or transcribed or whatever you want to call it was actually chat gpt generated or not 
That's how serious it's come. It's come to the point that the originating company that put out the software has to create a check and balance type system to it to verify that it will detect this text if it was generated by them. Uh, and the reason why was, well, this move comes in, and I'm, I'm quoting from the news article, well, this, why now? Well, this move comes in after the increased nuisance of plagiarized and baseless content across many fields, such as education, journalism, and even research. All three of them are really important to society. Those three fields are important to society. And with Jet GPT being use being the main culprit. Furthermore, in a recent move, New York City public schools have restricted access to Jet to Chat GPT on school networks and devices. So like if they gave you a laptop to take home and use no, 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 you're not going to be able to use it on there. So uh, this is done by citing concerns relating to the negative impacts on student learning and the safety and accuracy of the content by chat GPT. Uh, an actual spokesperson from OpenAI responded uh, to the article, and this is what they had to say. We made chat GPT available as a research preview to learn from real world use which we believe is a critical part of developing and deploying capable, safe AI systems. We are constantly incorporating feedback and lessons learned. We have always called for transparency around the use of AI-generated text. Our policies require that users be upfront with their audience when using our API and creative tools. We look forward to working with educators on useful solutions and other ways to help teachers and students benefit from this AI. So, that being said, the, the question has to be asked, as a student, should you have access to this or not? And in, in my opinion, that's a big fat no. I mean, you don't go to school with the purpose of having somebody do your schoolwork for you or your homework for you in order for you to get a successful scoring grade to pass that class. That's just, that's just lazy. And my, my only advice to anybody that does that in any way, shape or form is in the end you're cheating, but who are you really cheating? The most important person is who you're cheating and that's you because you're cheating yourself out of that knowledge and you're cheating yourself out of the process of learning that. I mean, failure is the best teacher that anybody could ever have. Here, I can't tell you how many times I've failed at things. I've failed so many times at so many different things. But each time that I failed, it was a learning opportunity. It sucks. It can be embarrassing. It could be inopportune. But it also is the greatest teacher that we have. So... Don't resort to this to sustainably learn something that you don't know in order to be able to pass a test or something like that. Use it to actually learn. I mean, to actually learn something that you don't know. It's a wonderful tool for that. Don't go plagiarizing it and using somebody else's quotes or whatever and plagiarizing that in order to make yourself look good in the workplace. Come on. Do things by your own merit. Earn things under your own merit. It's rewarding when you know you gave 100% of something, 100% of yourself to something, and succeeded. And it's also just as rewarding to know that you gave 100% of, of, your, of yourself to something, and you failed. Now you know that you got to give 110, and you go back and you figure out what you did wrong, and you get it right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So anyhow, I just figured I'd bring that to you guys' attention. Uh, I know some people out there are parents. Uh, some people are grandparents that are taking care of children or whatever. That's just kind of, you know, a PSA of what's going on out there because I think it's pretty important. I mean, we already have issues with our educational systems. And, you know, 
we need to take pride in our education nowadays and make it better. And, you know, the standards need to be a little bit better and held tighter to, you know, to, to the point, you know, an accountability being given there for children to, to succeed. So, guys, I just want to let you guys know that this is an actual thing that's happening out there. It's something that maybe your kids might be doing. So, you know, kind of give an eye or an ear out or whatever, you know, check on them. You know, make sure that they're doing things, you know. So, anyhow, you guys stay safe. Y'all keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing and stay blessed. Have a great day.